Welcome to the American Conference on ESPN. We are in Northern Kentucky tonight, the one-year home of the Cincinnati Bearcats, the 25th ranked team of the country. They play unbeaten Mississippi State out of the SEC. Kevin Brown alongside Georgetown head coach John Thompson III. So thrilled to be with you for Cincinnati. A great start to the season, 7-0, but they have taken a step up in competition by design. Dropped a couple of games to Xavier in Florida. Without a doubt, I'm not concerned about the two losses in a row. One, a rivalry game with Xavier. The other one, a neutral game against a ranked Florida team. You know, so, so far, their scoring in the last two games has dipped just a little bit, as well as their field goal percentage. Uh, but Coach Crone is going to have those guys fired up and ready to go tonight. They're playing a good Mississippi State team that gets some terrific distribution offensively. Five players in double figures. Yeah, they spread it around. They're perimeter oriented. The young man, um, uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, I think is the key. He really fills up the stat sheet for them. Q, as they call us, hit a couple of game-winning shots in the final second this year. Mississippi State on the road for the first time after an 8-0 start for Ben Allen's program in Starkville. And Mississippi State starts with the basketball. This is Nick Weatherspoon, the freshman, the younger brother of Quindary, with the first shot of the game and a miss. Rebounded by Cincinnati's Jaron Cumberland. Bearcats, the team picked by the American Conference coaches to win the conference in the preseason poll. Ranked 25th in the nation, the losses to Xavier and Florida. There's a see. rejection by a dude. I think the interior is key. Both teams are going to want to control the board today. That's good to see a dude making his presence felt early. Weatherspoon, meanwhile, with a straight on bank in at a three for Quindary Weatherspoon. He called it. He called bank, so it's good. You think he's their best player? I think he's playing the best right now. There's others that may have more potential, but he's really doing everything for them. He's making the big plays. He's making others better. This in the lane for Jaron Cumberland, cleaned up by Cincinnati's Jacob Evans. Not a Bearcats team with one go-to score, but they wouldn't mind it if Evans became that guy as he hits a three. Absolutely, and just as important tonight, you see they get a second shot early. That's going to be key for Mississippi State to try, and I mean try, to limit Cincinnati to one offensive shot. It's a Bulldogs team with good size. They start the 6'11 Abdullah Du and the 6'10 Eric Coleman. But Cincinnati can really rebound the ball, particularly with Gary Clark and Kyle Washington. And that's been a staple of mixed teams down through the years. They're going to be aggressive, they're going to mix up their defenses, and they're going to hit the boards. Here is Washington going to work on Holman, and he pours it in. Kyle Washington, the 6'9 redshirt senior with a bucket. It's a young man they'd like to get going defensively, and Get some better shots on offense. 11 points, but four turnovers in the loss to Florida on Saturday. And that's a, that was a team problem against Florida. They had 21 turnovers for the game. Holman missed a flying dunk attempt, and here is Jacob Evans for Cincinnati. And an offensive foul. That's Cincinnati's first turnover of this game. Won't be thrilled over on the sideline, Mr. Mick Cronin. 12th year head coach here at the University of Cincinnati, of course, an assistant under Bob Huggins. And, and following the last couple of games, Mick's not quite in the Christmas spirit yet. He's got to work his way up to that. Here's the takeaway is forced by his pressure as Cumberland is fouled on the way up. Cincinnati likes to press a little bit more this year. They have the guards they feel to do that. Uh, they do, and, and they're going to have to, Mississippi State's going to have to deal with that pressure all day. Um, Coach Howland, they're prepared for it, but simulating it in practice and actually coming out against it is something that's different. Uh, Cincinnati's going to be in their face the whole game. Well, Ben Allen's just taken a timeout. Two minutes and 23 seconds into this game. His team may be a little unnerved by that Cincinnati pressure and an early teaching moment for Ben Allen, the third-year head coach. Five in a row for Cincinnati. We'll be back at 30 from Northern Kentucky. Free throws for Jaron Cumberland as we return to the one-year home of the University of Cincinnati, BB&T Arena. This is the home arena for the Northern Kentucky Norris out of the Horizon League. 
Fifth Third Arena is undergoing major renovations across the river in Cincinnati. And so the Bearcats are temporarily here. Cumberland one for two, but another offensive rebound for Cincinnati. Here's the freshman Keith Williams. That is a long two. And Cincinnati has scored eight in a row. Holman nearly had his pocket picked by Justin Jennifer. It will stay with Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State is going to have to fix what I'm going to classify early in this game as a problem. They're going to have to start rebounding the ball. They cannot allow Cincinnati two and three shots. Well, Mississippi State is 8 0, and this young man is a big reason why. Eric Coleman at 6'10, 225, is now 12 for 19 from three point range on the year. He can really shoot the ball, uh, and you see they, they, they don't mind getting him shots. Uh, Coach Holland would like him to score, be a little more effective on the block. Cumberland got Carter in the air, and he is fouled from behind. Our officials tonight, by the way, Doug Sermons, Ted Valentine, Pat Adams. You see they're, they're working it around right here. And because of his size, a lot of people don't want to come out. But he's, he can make that shot. That's an easy shot for him. You're going to have to put your hand up. You can't just watch him shoot. It's part of the reason, right, that Mississippi State can play two bigs at 6'10", 6'11", when you have that kind of range to stretch the floor. Well, correct. And it's, it's the, the size really doesn't matter. The height doesn't matter. It's the skill set. And so... At both ends of the court, I must point out. So not only can he knock down shots at one end, but he can guard a smaller person down at the other end, which has allowed them to play big. Cumberland hits two here, three of four at the line early. And the Bearcats get back into their pressure. Mississippi State breaks it. And Tyson Carter connects on his first two. If you're a Mississippi State fan, you're glad to see that. They were poised with the pressure and they attacked. They didn't just try to beat it and reset their offense. They attacked the score. Tyson and Carter, by the way, 55 points in the previous two games, just two last game. He's someone, it was only two last game, but he can really shoot the ball. He's been shooting it well. They want him to stay aggressive. When Derry Weatherspoon of the rebound for Mississippi State, and he nearly hit a cameraman. Got that got away from him a little bit. He, he doesn't throw, he doesn't make that mistake too often. I want to point out the previous possession, you see that Clark was doubled in the post. But it, here's, here's Quindary, he, you know, he's coming down, tries to be a little too cute, ball goes out of bounds. I started to say when Clark gets the ball inside, Mississippi State's going to double him hard right away. They, they don't want him to have open one-on-one -on -one matchups in the post. Clark got it. That pass was knocked away. Try to feed Nasir Brooks. Ends up at a three for Williams. And Clark is there for the offensive rebound. Three-pointer Justin Jennifer. There's, there's the dagger. You get an offensive rebound, kick it out. Wide open three. Already eight second chance points at a 13 for Cincinnati. And Gary Clark comes off a game where he had eight offensive rebounds against Florida. Wild drive here and a blocking foul to call on Jennifer as Xavier Stapleton took it in. Whoa! Offensive rebounding key for Cincinnati early. Gary Clark, one of the best rebounders in the nation. And the Bearcats convert. They lead by five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity, Empower the Drive, and Chase Sapphire Reserve. Across the river from Ohio, we are in northern Kentucky, Cincinnati leading Mississippi State. It's a Bulldogs team that's gone unbeaten in large part due to the sophomore Tyson Carter and the junior Quinary Weatherspoon and his freshman brother Nick. Yeah, and that trio right there, are, they're going to have to figure out Cincinnati's matchup zone, which, which they're, I think they're struggling with so far. They're just passing the ball around the perimeter. They have to attack that zone a little better. Bulldogs three of six, but they have turned it over twice, each turnover leading to a Cincinnati three. The ball's just working around the perimeter. Now we get it inside. That's good. Good feed there, and a three-pointer rattles around. No go from Lamar Peters. How do you solve Cincinnati's matchup zone? 
So I think they need more movement, and they need to do like they just did on that possession, go inside and then come out. They can't just whip it around the perimeter and think they're going to get a good shot. Now how about here? Bearcats offense, Bulldogs defense. Well, they're being patient. You know, they, they, they probably want to get Clark a couple of touches. Instead, Jennifer misses a two. It's tipped out of bounds by Nasir Brooks. You know, Jennifer has shown a lot of growth this this offseason going into this year, going from not really playing that much to where he's being asked to run the team. And he's someone through, throughout his life, he's been a scoring point guard. And he's learning and doing a much better job of running the Cincinnati offense. First year starter took over for the longtime starter point guard. Of course, Troy Capane with a terrific career at Cincinnati. Helped lead the Bearcats to their second winning his season in school history last year, 30 and 6. They bowed out to UCLA in the round of 32. On the drive, there is Nick Weatherspoon with his first basket. And he is as talented as they come. You know, he's settling down into this game. He's going to have to have a big game for them as we as we progress. Number one player out of the state of Mississippi. And a great pickup for Ben Allen, who will go with a hockey line change here and bring in three new Bulldogs. Well, you know, that's something they have a little more depth this year, Coach Holland thinks, which has made practices better, the competition in practice, which then in turn is making the team better. They've had a couple of injuries and some suspensions. Tonight is the first night Mississippi State has all 11 scholarship players available, and they've played just about all of them so far. There's some good defense from E.J. Datcher, and only six to shoot for Cincinnati. Nick Cronin will quickly get Jacob Evans into the game for the freshman Keith Williams. Williams is going to be a big time player here. He, he, he's given them some good minutes so far today. There's Kane Broom, a Sacred Heart transfer, dynamic scorer. Broom, Washington, and that is waved off. Pat Adams has it as a shot clock. Violation, but you see there, Mississippi State, one of the youngest teams in America, one of just five teams in Division One, without a senior on scholarship. They have just a senior walk-on player in Drew Davis, and that's it. And last year they they were the youngest, so they're, they're still a work in progress. Amazing to think that this team will just about entirely return, if not fully return, next year. You never know with transfers. Or injuries, but Ben Allen looks to have a bright future here at Starkville. Travel against Eli Wright will send it back to Cincinnati. The last possession, Cincinnati um, is trying to get the ball inside. They had, they had uh, Clark on one block, Washington on the other block, and just playing three around two. We'll see if they go back to something similar to that. Gary Clark just over 13 points per game. Kyle Washington just under nine and a half for Cincinnati. Here is Clark. And he is fouled in the paint. And so you see, that's that's a little isolation they run for Clark. They clear out, get him the ball around the top of the key, and he goes hard to his right. You see at the end, he had three defenders around him. He's a good passer. They're going to double and triple him, but he is a good passer. Would you try to run the offense through him? I try to do that through yeah, him. There you Clark go. Is fouled. <laughs> nice out of bounds play right there by Cincinnati. They were working on that extensively yesterday. And you know, first time they get it, they get a they get a lay or get a foul rather. I, I, I think I would do what what Cincinnati has done all year. I, I don't know what I'd say run the offense through Clark, but I'd make sure he gets touches. He touches the ball all the time because he's going to draw a crowd, and he's a good passer and he makes very good decisions. He's improved his free throw shooting this year as well, around 83 percent. Yep. And so you see, they bring him up. It's an isolation. He goes to the right. He, three three defenders close in on him. He gets fouled before he kicks it out. It's a young man who comes from Clayton, North Carolina, and was not heavily recruited by the North Carolina teams. A wonderful pickup for Mick Cronin, a four-year starter. One of the best players in this much improved American Athletic Conference this season. Mississippi straight trying to find a rhythm offensively. A few turnovers early. Bulldogs have not gotten to the line yet. Peters a bounce pass. Datcher wraps it around. And a shot short by Holman, but a foul. And they, and they bailed him out right at the end. Uh, you know, you go up, there's no need to slap down right there. 
and, and, and create that foul. But you see, once again, you know, they, they, they only get a good look at the very end of the shot clock. This, this matchup zone is bothering Mississippi State. That possession, they ran their man-to-man -man offense. Previously, they'd been running their zone sets. That time, they went to one of their man-to-man -man plays. And it leads to free throws for Eric Holman. 68% from the line this season. Now Mississippi State has not left Starkville until tonight. They're 8-0, all eight are at home, but still it's their best start in a long time. 14 seasons. Bulldogs, Florida State, and Villanova, the only three schools left with unbeaten men's and women's teams. Well, the, the, our previous discussion in talking about their youth is related to their scheduling. Coach Howland know, knew they were going to be young going into this year, and he intentionally scheduled a lot of games at home, a lot of games against competition. This is the first time they're stepping it up in competition to try to get his young guys ready to play at this level as he heads towards conference play. What should be the expectation for Mississippi State this season? I know it's early, but where do you see this team? I think it's too hard to, to tell right now. You know, the SEC is, is, is difficult. It's difficult, and they're still young. They haven't been tested enough to get a really good read on where I think they feel. Tonight's game's going to be important in that regard. Certainly, I think their biggest litmus test so far is Washington. It's a two for Cincinnati. Now, let's see how they attack this zone. Eli Wright back from a three-game suspension for violation of team rules. Holman too strong over Clark and there is Jacob Evans. But that, that's, six. I'm sorry that's what State wants to get Holman doing a little more. He goes down on the block now instead of taking a turnaround fadeaway shot coach would like him to go to the rim to the to the, to the rim a little more. Weatherspoon that was way off the mark another rebound for Evans. Three points, four rebounds for Jacob Evans. Broom and open three. Broom's got to make that. He's wide open. That's what he does. He's got to knock that down. He's a great scorer. A couple of years ago, was the player of the year in the Northeast Conference with Sacred Heart. First year player with Cincinnati. Evans coming in for the block. And Jacob Evans playing strong down low. Team leading 14th block of the year for the Cincinnati Junior. College football bowl season kicks off this weekend. Saturday on ABC, a double header starting with the Celebration Bowl. Rambling out of the SWAC at North Carolina A&T, out of the MEAC at noon. Then Boise State in its 16th consecutive season with the bowl against the Oregon Ducks and their new head coach, Mario Cristobal, both games available on the ESPN app. Early lead for Cincinnati, and the Bearcats have taken advantage of takeaways. And I think the number that Mick Cronin likes, John, after 21 turnovers on Saturday, is the one for his team. That, 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 without a doubt, that's what he likes. And you look at they're winning the turnover battle as well as the battle of the boards. They've doubled up Mississippi State on, on the boards now, 10 to 5. And three of those offensive. Six different scores so far for Cincinnati, which is what they can do offensively. Balanced team. Right now the leading scorer is Washington with four. He goes to work and leaves it short. Coming out of timeout, they, they go right to the block trying to get a, a, another point in the paint. Holman down the lane. No good with the left hand. Holman a little bit slow to get back up. Jennifer will hit Washington. Bit of a transition opportunity, and Washington finishes. No, outnumbering situation. Holman makes a good drive down the other end. He just missed the shot. He's got to get up and get back in the play a little faster. Kyle Washington, three out of four early for Cincinnati. Bearcats team averaging over 83 points per game, although they scored just 60 on Saturday against Florida. And Mick Cronin said, we're not beating many high major teams with 60. We need at least 70. Offensive rebound for right. He is stuffed. Well, Mick Crone has not always been known for a high-flying offensive team. He's known for that defensive intensity. There is reason to believe, though, this could be his best offensive team, especially with his five starters and Kane Broom off the bench. Well, they're playing a little faster this year. 
and, and, and guys, other, the opponents are paying so much attention to Clark. The shooters on the perimeter are, are getting pretty good shots. They've been great defensively right now as well. Mississippi State won for its last eight. Thank you, Barton. Now one for nine after that last missed shot. They're going back inside the clock right here. There's Washington. Clark on the other block. Washington flips it short. It'll be interesting to see if they go back to that play. That's the play they ran coming out of the timeout. They got Washington that post up and then went right back to it. Three for Lamar Peters is way too strong and a nice outlet feed. Clark around Weatherspoon who was trying to draw the charge. Instead he's called for a block. And, and you see what's key right there. A quick contested three at one end leads to a transition opportunity at the other end. Nah, it looks like he leaned a little bit. That might have been the right call. But that breakout opportunity was caused by a quick, a quick three uh, at, at the offensive end for Mississippi State, which leads to a blowout for, for Cincinnati coming down this end. Is that their game, Mississippi State, quick threes? They don't mind taking the quick threes. I don't, I don't think it's their game. They have, they have to get the ball into the paint in some way, shape, or form. And I don't necessarily mean throw it in to score, but you have to get some penetration, some movement, play inside out. Gary Clark really worked on his shooting this summer. He's added range to his game. He's a career 70% free throw shooter, but he's up around 85 this year. Four of four at the line today. It's an 11 to three run for the Cincinnati Bearcats, the number 25 team of the country, coming off losses to Xavier and Florida. Bulldogs have gone cold from the field against the teeth of this Bearcats defense. Abdul Adu lost it. They're, they're struggling down that end. Nobody got Clark. And Evans taps it out to Jennifer. Another offensive rebound for Cincinnati. Washington. And you know what I like about that possession? A, they get another offensive rebound. But then they're very unselfish. No one jacks up a quick shot. They work it around. Go go right back to Washington on that block where he's going over his right shoulder and it's that he's a lefty that's going to go in. Very unselfish basketball right there. And once again, the offensive rebound leads to points for, for the Bearcats. Well, holiday hoops are back. And Sunday afternoon, we've got a terrific matchup for you on ESPN. The defending national champs from North Carolina to Tennessee to take out a terrific Volunteers team. One of the early surprises in the SEC. North Carolina, Tennessee, 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Coach Barnes has a Tennessee team rolling right now. They played really well in the battle for Atlantis. Took Villanova down to the wire in that game. They're the number one team in the country, Villanova. Kyle Washington and Cincinnati have been terrific inside. Four offensive rebounds leading to 10 second chance points. Now for Mick Cronin against Xavier, the defensive intensity wasn't there. Uh, against Florida, the offensive execution wasn't there. So far better, I think, on both accounts. So far better on both accounts, without a doubt. But if it slips, Mick's going to let you know about it. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know. There's Tyson Carter. Working to a two again on the block. Out for Carter. And a missed three-pointer. Evans lost the rebound in traffic. And a three clangs off the iron for Peters. Two quick threes again. And guess who comes down with the rebound? Clark. Evans wide right. Mississippi yeah. State will make some changes. Now, I don't like that shot by Evans. This is this is a key stretch in this basketball game. It's 23 to 11, eight minutes, 11 seconds to go. You know, this is a stretch where Mississippi State can either settle down and, and, and close this, this gap or Cincinnati can pull away. Both of the teams have to be disciplined enough right now to understand that this, you know, we're in the first half, eight minutes to go, but this is a key stretch in this game. 
Weatherspoon's pass knocked away, and he didn't get it across in time. A 10-second violation forced by the press. Yeah, they're working. Justin Jennifer right there. And it, this is one of those opportunity traps. It's not necessarily scripted. The defender has, has his choice. When you want to go, go if you, if you can go. How new is that for what Mick Cronin and Cincinnati do? That sort of trapping full court. I don't think that's new at all. They didn't do it as much last year. Look at this kid. Look, look at him work. Just look at him work. Another second chance opportunity. Cumberland. Contacted the way up, and here come the Bulldogs. Quick three on one. Weatherspoon from his brother. First well, points in about five minutes. It is, and and if if they're not going to offensive rebound, if they're not going to break penetration, they're going to have to get transition baskets. They get one here. Nick to Q. The Bulldogs finally back on the board. Gary Clark's been a beast on the boards, as is usually the case for the Cincinnati senior. I, I think he's one of the more underrated players in the country. I mean, you just look at his effort, his energy, how he's ruling his team through this game. Already five rebounds in the game, two of them on the offensive end. He scored four points all on free throws. And he has blocked two shots. He is the third leading career rebounder among active players in the country. Is it just a matter of effort? Is that the key for him in terms of rebounding? It's a skill, man. That, that, that effort is a skill. Like you said, he's third in the country in total rebounds throughout his career. That's what he does. Keith Williams back in the game for Cincinnati. And he throws it away. Uh, Freshman is trying to execute maybe a little too much right there. Clearly, the game plan was to come and go to Clark on the block and he forced the pass. It wasn't there. Only the second Cincinnati turnover. Weatherspoon into total traffic and an easy block for Washington. I've not seen much Kane Broom so far for Cincinnati, which has thrown it away on back to back possessions. And Mick Cronin immediately calls for a substitute. He's going to get. Mamadou Diarra into the game for the first time. Holman misses a three. You sure? No, he doesn't. You sure about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to hang on for a second the next time the big fella puts it up. His second three pointer of the game. That went up over the top of the backboard, came back down, hit the rim four times, and goes in. Friendly rims here at Northern Kentucky University. BB&T Arena, the home of the Bearcats, while well, Fifth Third Arena is under renovation. Washington again. Had the matchup with Weatherspoon. That's a great matchup. They did. They, they created a switch with a little dribble exchange. They created a switch. He ends up with Weatherspoon on him on that block that he likes, that little jump hook into the middle. We've seen that four times maybe tonight. Eight points for Washington in 11 minutes. He stayed out of foul trouble. He's been aggressive. Nearly a steal there for Williams. Nick Weatherspoon then turns it over. Nice little pump fake right there. And then the shot goes up by Holman. You know, they, got, they have to find a way. They have to find a way to get open shots. They're starting to look a little frustrated right now with each other. And so they need to make sure they nip that in the bud right now. Bearcats have shot just a little better. They've hit some threes and free throws. Forced some turnovers as well. Jennifer nine to shoot. A do comes out, flashing of the screen and roll. Evans with a shot fake. Now takes a tough three and draws nothing. Now that was a good defensive possession. You know, they started off Cincinnati, that is, three out, two in, trying to pound the ball inside. It wasn't really there. Mississippi State locked up coming down the stretch. That was a very good possession. They need to string together a couple of those as we end out the first half.
Bulldogs have been the best scoring defense in the SEC early on. Second best field goal percentage defense. And Cincinnati's just 8 for 22 tonight. Again, Mississippi State has not played a road game until tonight. That's a nifty shot by Nick Weatherspoon. And they're going to have to find a way for Nick to get hot. He's an athlete. He can, he can create his own shot. He's gone in, in, into the teeth of the zone and barreled over people a couple times. He's got to make better decisions once he gets in there. Interception there by Nick. Beg your pardon, this is Q Weatherspoon, and he lays it in to come to Cincinnati lead to five. This is the run they needed. Just calm down a little bit. Start making Cincinnati work at the offensive end. Cincinnati for a long time had just one turnover up to five right now. They're starting to pile up. Clark is also on the bench. We're going to see how long Coach Cronin keeps him there. Clark and Washington. Evans, a much needed three. He needed that. He needed that for his confidence. He's looking a little sluggish today. Only his fourth shot attempt. But he's hit a couple of threes. Cincinnati has just four made shots outside of Washington, who is on the bench at five for seven. Weatherspoon. And a travel before the contact. Another turnover for Mississippi State, trying to find a rhythm here at Cincinnati. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut, the best pizza delivery deal. Order today with a large two-topping pizza for just $7.99. And Gillette, the best a man can get. All right, guys, we'll look forward to catching up with you at halftime. Mississippi State down eight, and they're trying to do something that nobody's done in 31 games. Win at Cincinnati, no matter the home court. Fifth Third Arena for 26 of those. And BB&T Arena for the last four. Bearcats have won 30 in a row at home. They just turned it over as Evans' pass clanged off of Washington. Well, real quick, these fans here are outstanding. You're, you're playing... Not in your normal arena. The place looks packed today. Students are on vacation and everyone's still here and vocal. Seats 9,400 and it is just about filled here on a Tuesday night. Nick Weatherspoon, line drive shot off the back of the rim. And Savion Stapleton was sent out most of the first half with a couple of fouls. Got the rebound, missed the shot. Yeah, but that's what they need. Stapleton threw his body in there, got him a second shot. That's what they need. Four turnovers in the last six possessions for Cincinnati, which has gone back to Washington. Scott on a handoff. And Evans was bumped and fouled by Nick Weatherspoon, his first. Sunday, ESPN presents a bold triple header. Saturday, beg your pardon. On ESPN, starting at 1 Eastern, a good one. And the RL Carriers, New Orleans Bowl, Troy, and North Texas. 430. Marshall of Colorado State, the New Mexico Bowl. And we wrap up the night at 8 Eastern, the Camellia Bowl between Middle Tennessee and Arkansas State. All streaming live as well, wherever you may be on the ESPN app. Fun to be at the start of bowl season in the overlap of college basketball. Conference play starting soon, and for some conferences, already has begun. Washington again, his sixth field goal and eight tries. Why not go back to him? Why not? On that same block right there, he's getting it every time. He's, I don't think he's missed on that block tonight. Kyle Washington two games ago did not score at Xavier. He has been the dominant force for Cincinnati this evening. And it will be interesting to see if, if they try to get others involved or if they keep feeding him. Schneider Harrard foul. Gary Clark picks up his first. Neither team is in considerable foul trouble. Only Stapleton has two. But they go inside. They make a strong move to the rim. They pick up a foul. They have to try to create those opportunities. Holman left all alone, and he hits his third three. No doubt about that one. No, out of bounds play. Maybe he can get going a little bit. Let's see what Cincinnati does here. 
Home of the first double figure score of the game for Mississippi State. There's Jared Cumberland, a quiet night for him. Back into Washington over Schneider Herard. And no matter who Mississippi State's throwing in Washington, he has delivered. Well, I'll tell you this. They practiced and plan on doubling Clark, and they're doing that. I, I, I got a funny feeling they need to start doubling Washington because he's doing all, all, the, all the damage. And Clark on the deck, and Cincinnati picks up the steal with Evans. Cumberland. And Washington a little bit late getting over half court. Cincinnati will take it five on five. Final 75 seconds of the first half. Jennifer around the screen from Clark. Again, single coverage in Washington can't complete. Offensive rebound opportunity denied as Holman snatched it away. Mississippi State has to do something about that. They keep getting the same play of the ball on the same block. And another steal initiated by Clark. And a salute from the Cincinnati fans to the hard work of the senior Gary Clark. You have to respect it. You have to respect it. I got a feeling Washington's going to get the ball on the block. No, it's up. It is Evans trying to go to work. Bumped inside. Nice call. That's the play. They've run that play for Clark several times earlier in the half. A little isolation. He gets it right there and goes hard to his right. This time Evans comes through. It's a isolation right there. He goes hard to his right. Spins back, steps through. Tough shot. Tough shot. They'd like him to be a little more assertive offensively, Evans. 13 and a half points per game last year. Shot 42% from three. Came into tonight at 13.1, just under that. Shooting 38% from three. And he has had a strong first half shooting the ball. Uh, the ball now with nine. As ties the largest lead for Cincinnati as Mississippi State can hold for the final shot. Bulldogs averaging just under 79 points per game, shooting just under 50% from the field. They will end the first half in the 20s. Weatherspoon. Nice find and Holman throws it down. A punctuation point for Holman who had 12 of Mississippi State's 25. Weather swoon, making something happen. Jacob Evans, 9.6 rebounds for Cincinnati. 14 for Kyle Washington. And the Bearcats, fresh off a couple of losses, lead Mississippi State by 10. Eric Coleman trying to get the Bulldogs closer. A thunderous end to the first half. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams take it away here at the half. Welcome back to college basketball on ESPN right across the river from downtown Cincinnati the Bearcats the hometown team lead Mississippi State by 10 after 20 minutes of play Kevin Brown John Thompson the third with you Mississippi State with just 25 points tied its lowest point total for a first half this year that's in large part due to a terrific Cincinnati defense well it's been a couple of things as I think has been He's scoring almost every time he's touched the ball. They have to keep going back to him. Let's see what adjustments Mississippi State makes. Do you expect them to double him here at some point? I think they have to. Double comes for Clark. Jaron Cumberland did not hit a shot for the field in the first half, and he misses the three. Cincinnati trying to extend the nation's longest home winning streak. 30 games in a row, four of them here at BB&T Arena. Here in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Mississippi State on the board. Eric Holman at 12 in the first half. He now has more than half of Mississippi State's points. 
and giving Cincinnati a little taste of their own medicine. Offensive rebound with a putback. First, second chance bucket of the game for Mississippi State. Clark hits a three. Hits a three off. Excellent penetration by Jennifer. Draws in the defense, kicks out to an open Clark. Something a little bit different about his game the last couple of years, his extended range. Seven for 20 from deep this year for Gary Clark. You know, he's a worker. He's, he's, everyone talks about one and dones. This is a guy that stayed in school, and every year you see an improvement in his game. What's the biggest improvement you see this year as Carter hits a three? What you just articulated. He's making the outside shot, the perimeter shot, much better than he has in the past. Justin Jennifer with the ball for Cincinnati. Kane Broom played just three minutes in that first half. 17 minutes for Jennifer. And Broom just headed over toward the scores table, and then Mick Cronin told him to sit back down. Cumberland swatted away. Abdul Adu. Well, welcome to the welcome to the party, Mr. Adu. We go. We he goes through the first half and has one rebound. They need him to get more rebounds. But that's nice penetration. Get that out of here. That was much ado leading to nothing. <laughs> Here is Broom in the game now for Cincinnati. Clark out of the double. Evans three to shoot. And Gary Clark cleans up another offensive rebound. We got a new shot clock. Third offensive board for Clark. Here's the double with a do. Washington, no double. Clark. Clark, 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 Clark. He's just outworking everybody on the court. He's done it for four years. 13 points, eight and a half rebounds per game for Clark. Cumberland at three. Second chance points technically, although it's more like third chance points on that possession. And those are so deflating to you as a defense. You have to, the possession ends with the rebound, not with the shot. Holman facing up Washington. Back to Tyson Carter. A great score for Mississippi State. What a quiet first. And Cumberland sends it into the first row. No, and, 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 and Carter is someone that's going to have to make shots the way Missis, the way Cincinnati rather is playing Mississippi State. He's going to get those open shots. If they're going to keep taking them, which looks like they are, he's going to have to knock those down. Fifth block of the game for Cincinnati, one of the top shot blocking teams in the American. Holman misses a tough two, and the rebound cleared by Washington. Once again, Mississippi State is one and done. Clark has called for a foul, trying to establish post position on Holman. I think that was a good call. I think that was a good call. He's being aggressive, posting up down there. That's his second. Been the Kyle Washington show for Cincinnati for most of this night, and here he is called for a blocking foul. It has. He hasn't. They haven't gotten him involved yet. Um, this second half, they have to get him going. Only his first. Quindary Weatherspoon to the line for Mississippi State. You know, and, and a block was called right there, and, and probably was the right call. But those are the situations where both Weatherspoons and the rest of the Mississippi State perimeter players, once you get in there, they have to be a little more composed. You've seen several times tonight they go in there and they're running people over or throwing the ball away. Penetration, you have four guys around you. Block is called. Weatherspoon one for two. Who got the rebound? Clark. Even if you weren't looking, <laughs> you probably know who got the rebound. Seven and eight for Clark in 20 minutes. Inside to Washington. And he's missed his first two and a half. Evans an offensive rebound too strong. Yeah, Cincinnati saw something they wanted. It looks like they're trying to take advantage of where they're having Washington slip the on balls instead of setting them. Carter had it knocked away. And a foul as Washington took it across half court. Q Witherspoon with his second. That was another block by Clark, by the way, who has three of those. It's 
Cincinnati try to snap a two game losing streak. Bearcats who were 30 and six last year, second in the American. Washington trying from three, and he has missed all three to start this second half. He has, and they need to get it to him back on that right block. Holman, look at Broom jumping in front for the steal. Here comes Broom, up top and thrown down by Clark. That was an unbelievable play by Broom. That was an unbelievable play. He was out man, smaller guy on the bigger guy in the post, worked his behind off, got around, led to a transition back, unselfish play, throws to Oop. Weatherspoon. And here is Evans for Cincinnati. It was Broom, six feet, 160, stepping in front of the 6'10", Holman. Uh, and there's a home. travel. Got a little excited right there. Speaking of a little excited, how about this from Kate Broom? Up top to Gary Clark for Cincinnati after the takeaway. The Sacred Heart transfer throwing it up. The big guy throwing it down. to the University of Cincinnati coaching staff this year and, and it's a familiar face. There is the one time Bearcat great DeMar Johnson who has come back as a student assistant. Of course he didn't graduate. He was out of here quickly after being named the freshman of the year in 2001 and done. Sixth pick by the Atlanta Hawks. Parts of seven seasons in the NBA and he is back home at UC. And to me you know that's what college is all about. That's what everything is all about. A young man that leaves school early has a very successful NBA career. His career is over. He's now a full time student back here in school getting his degree. That, that's a great story. You were talking to him before the game. It seemed like he was pretty happy about being here with the Bearcats once again. No, he is. He's excited about working towards his degree and also working with Coach Cronin with the team. Nick Cronin, of course, a, a UC grad, 12th year as the head coach. And Demar Johnson, one of the biggest student assistants you're ever going to see but the biggest one that you're going to see is Greg Oden who is a student assistant right now at Ohio State saw him out the PK 80 in Portland and still opens eyes when that young man walks out of the court yeah I bet he does the opposition is glad to find that he's not suiting up sorry to bring up Greg Oden in your presence by the way <laughs> we're going to just let that one roll <laughs> There's Evans, 9 and 7 right now for Cincinnati, points and rebounds. That's the same isolation play. He got the three point play on at the end of the first half. You heard the, the, the I started to say UCLA, you heard the Mississippi State bench calling out ISO, ISO as soon as he called it. Datcher on the drive. Bart Peters off the buck from Cumberland. Cumberland, nice job staying in front of him. And Clark has the rebound stripped. They got a piece of the shot, and then Weatherspoon is fouled by Evans. Now that, that was excellent hustle by Peters right there. And, and Mississippi State is going to have to start making more hustle plays because they're getting nothing easy in the half court. You know, struggle, struggle, struggle. Boom. Tip right there. Then he scraps his way in there, just takes it away from Clark, which you're not going to see too often. We, they end up getting fouled. They're going to have to start junking the game up and, and seeing if they can get some deflections and see if they can start getting some second shots because just coming down trying to score in the half court is not working tonight for them. 32 points right now in about 25 and a half minutes. Two for Quindary Weatherspoon who is in double figures. 965 career points now for the junior out of Canton, Mississippi. There's Clark, who's oh so close to a double-double. Nine points, nine rebounds, also has four blocks. Washington given some space, takes it into the double. Cumberland left all alone. And he missed a three. Well, we see the adjustment right there. They got the ball on one, to, to Clark on one block, he was doubled. They swing it around to Washington on the other block. This time, he was doubled. Ball yeah. right here. Big man took it up the floor. All right. It's the assist to Evans. All right. Your shot's not going in. How can I affect the game other ways? Clark, get, I mean, Washington gets a big rebound, blowout, nice assist. 13 assists for Cincinnati on 16 made field goals. Offensive foul against Peters. 
it, it's a struggle for him right now. You see down the other end, big block. Washington gets in there, rebound, pushes out. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Big man getting involved in other ways. First two years for Kyle Washington were at North Carolina State. What an addition for Mick Cronin and Cincinnati. Mick recruited him hard before he made his college decision. Recruited him even harder the second time. Off shooting night for Cumberland. Schneider Herrard clears it for Mississippi State. Nice transition defense by Cincinnati right there. That's one of those opportunities Mississippi State would like to take advantage of. Great transition basket. Now here they are struggling in the half court again. Now they've had almost nothing tonight in transition, Mississippi State. They do like to get out and run. Stapleton will feed the post. Snyder Herrard, sophomore from Haiti. And the Bulldogs will keep it with Herrard. Oh, Washington gets up, denies Stapleton. Another block for Cincinnati. Kyle Washington swats. He kicks it out. He reposts. Penetration. Washington with the big block right there. Eight blocks for Cincinnati in the game. No. This is a long pass reeled in by Weatherspoon. Touchdown. Cincinnati bench thought he traveled. Not so, according to Pat Adams. Stapleton, a top two. A whistle underneath and a foul against Mississippi State. Now, this, it's going to be interesting in the first half when Coach Cronin took out Washington and Clark. Mississippi State made a little run. So just, just now, both of them are on the bench. Let's see if he can make a little run here. Well, Quindary Weatherspoon has to come out with three fouls for Mississippi State. Big loss for Ben Allen. Their only offense really has been from Weatherspoon and Holman, who've combined for 24 of the Bulldogs' 33. Yeah, he has three, but I don't think he's going to be sitting over there too long. Think just to the under 12, or maybe a little bit longer than that. Evans with a deep three. It, it, it might, we're under 12 now, so you're right. It may, it may be immediately. Nice dribbling here by Peters. That's, and an offensive foul. Great defense by Brooks going straight up. That, that, that's what we said a few minutes ago. The penetration right there, you have to stop and kick it out. And this is going to be an improved conference this year, and he's excited about that, and the opportunity to play more quality teams, get more quality wins. Of course, Wichita State coming in as the headliner, but SMU should still be strong this year, the league champions last year. Houston and Temple look improved. UCF, we just saw them. They get B.J. Taylor back. They're going to be a very tough out. So this could be as strong a year as we've seen from the American Conference. Woo! Pickpocket for Weatherspoon. Okay, okay. Weatherspoon picks his pocket, goes in for the easy layup. Now, that's that's the life I'm talking about. Sitting down, Jennifer gets just a little careless, just a little careless. Uh, Weatherspoon with the quick hands, picks him, goes down. Let's see if they can build a little momentum off of that. Right now, the Cincinnati's crosstown rival, Xavier, is number 10 of the Associated Press Bowl, a new number one Villanova, and the Bearcats' new conference rival, Wichita State, all the way up to number three. Defending national champs there, North Carolina, are sitting at number seven, and they've got a terrific non-conference game Sunday afternoon on ESPN, three Eastern North Carolina and Tennessee against a terrific volunteers team under Rick Barnes. That game also streaming on the ESPN app as part of our Holiday Hoops presented by Zales. A little 6 nothing spur here, John, for Mississippi State. Cincinnati's game high lead of 19 cut to 13. Where do you go on offense? I'm, I'm going inside. Washington has not scored in this second half. Cumberland 
Washington wants the ball back. Cumberland might be a little bit too close there. Adu is tied up. Possession to Mississippi State. The, Mississippi State's come alive a little bit here. You say uh, uh, Cumberland is too close. I mean, that was almost a handoff right there. Uh, but that he should have just dropped it to him without the dribble, without the penetration. Now let's see if Cincinnati can get their energy back with it with their press. Little token pressure right now. Broom on Quindary Weatherspoon. 12.7 rebounds for Mississippi State. Bulldogs have not shot it well at all in the second half. Weatherspoon up top and Holman all the way down. That's just his second basket of, of the half. Weatherspoon again creating for others. We got a game, fellas. Eight in a row for Mississippi State. One of seven unbeaten teams of the country. By far its stiffest test tonight here in Northern Kentucky. Oh, what a feed by Clark Evans with a two-hander. I like that play right there. Drop to the elbow, a little backdoor cut. Doesn't get any easier than that. Third assist for Clark. Was well, nine points, nine rebounds, and four blocks. I do with a screen for Nick Weatherspoon going into Washington. Doing a little run right here. Ten of the last twelve have come from Mississippi State. Again, Clark at the elbow, looking to distribute. Evans a three. And the rebound, Eli Wright. Could have got a better shot right there. Weatherspoon, no sir. Evans up for the easy stuff. Tenth block for Cincinnati. Mississippi State's awakened a little bit right here. If they're getting a little more ball movement, what a terrific pass by Weatherspoon right there. And Cincinnati with the answer. Clark to Evans. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Heineken. Open your world. Enjoy responsibly. Yeah, very excited to see that young man. He is as talented and as long as they come. Obama, a competitive Texas team early this year. Cincinnati trying to hang on to this 11 point lead. Mississippi State has started to shoot a little bit better after a very slow start to this first half. Uh, the Bulldogs right now 43 points from just four players. They have hit their last three. They have 16 from Holman, 12 from Q Weatherspoon, 10 from Nick Weatherspoon, 5 from Lamar Peters, and, and that is it. And, and just as much as who has scored, you have to look at Peters, who's, who's 0, for, 0 for 9, 0 for 5. That was Carter with five points, and Peters has turned it over five times in addition to missing all nine shots. They love his potential, but he's an inconsistent player, Lamar Peters, and he is off the floor right now for Mississippi State. The four scorers plus Abdul Adu. Nick Weatherspoon. And Adu is there. He can't get his first two. And he commits a foul. Frustration foul. Nick goes in there as he did the, the previous possession. Um, misses Adu, follows up with frustration pass. So Peters is struggling a little bit. He's sitting over there on the bench. So he, hasn't, he hasn't made a field goal. You can't. You come into the game. They, he's one of their leaders. They, they need him to put points on the board. And you saw 19 percent from three on the year for Peters, and that will now go down with the 0 for 5 from deep tonight. Cumberland, Washington flashed open for a moment. Clark, Cumberland, no offensive rebound. Clark. Tenth rebound of the game for Gary Clark. Oh, 
Washington along two. He is still scoreless in the second half. Yeah, and he, I think he only has a couple of touches on that block. We got a mismatch down here with Broom on a do. Weatherspoon got it away. Clark was guarding him. Fall away Q. No. Rebound Weatherspoon. Beg your pardon, Washington. Cincinnati appears to be in no hurry to initiate the offense with an 11 point lead. Bearcats try to snap that two game losing streak to Xavier in Florida and finally they get it inside to Washington. Finally they get it inside on that block that he likes. He shoots that lefty jump hook it goes in. He has tied his season high with 16. That three goes for Tyson Carter and it leads to a quick timeout taken by Ben Howland. You got the pick and roll right there. You find Washington inside. He gathers himself. Once again, it's not pretty, but it's effective. Been a balanced effort for Cincinnati tonight. We've talked about Clark, Washington with 16. Jacob Evans has 16 as well, plus seven rebounds and some stifling defense. And as they head towards conference play, they're going to need him to be an additional consistent score. They're going to need to depend on him night in, night out to knock down those shots as, as Washington and Clark garner most of the attention inside. One of 20 small forwards named the Julius Irving watch list. His mom was a, a point guard at Grambling. She likes to text him after games with something she sees, an area where he can improve. What do you think she's texting uh, after tonight? Because he's been pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into that. A few you, things I stay away you from. Don't, you don't want to get into the mind of texting mothers. <laughs> no. Right. But I will say this. He, he going into this game, he's one of the leaders in the American Conference in six different statistical categories. So he's doing everything. He's not just scoring points. There's Clark, another two everything guy. Evans left alone. That's a three. Dang. There we go. Mama's texting. Great job right now. <laughs> <laughs> Four three of the game for the six six junior from Baton Rouge. Lamar Peters, 0 for six from three. And you see the difference between the last two threes for each team. Down this end of the court with Cincinnati. The ball goes into Clark. He takes a few dribbles, kicks it out to Evans for a wide open three. It goes down. Down the other end, the ball just goes around the perimeter. Peters, who hasn't made a shot yet, takes a quick shot. Who got that rebound? Evans. No, I'm sorry, Clark. That's <laughs> I thought I would let you answer your own question, but next time <laughs> I'll just jump in. You got me on the Weatherspoon swap, so Ooh, we're even. Got another one. Here comes Nick Weatherspoon, and he'll lay it in. You know, Nick Weatherspoon is an outstanding on-ball defender. It, it's not just luck that he happened to get Jennifer a few minutes ago and then Evans right there. He really can guard the ball. You think he's their best on-ball defender? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. How he's, he's an elite on ball defender. How often do you say that about a freshman? Not too often. Not too often, but he competes now. It's, it's interesting. He's active. He's strong enough. You know, he's got great instincts and reflexes, and he's strong enough to hold off most people. That's the second time he's plucked someone and going in for an uncontested layup tonight. Mississippi State within 11 after the blocking foul against Nick Weatherspoon. Not tonight at midnight Eastern after the Sixers and Wolves. Don't miss Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. It goes one on one with Joel LMB to the Sixers. Plus, the long awaited season debut of Kawhi Leonard and an evaluation of Lonzo Ball after 25 games. Sports Center with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. The lead 11 for Cincinnati. We're back with the final 302 when we return. 
nation's longest home streak belongs to the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. They can make it 31 in a row. Three minutes and two seconds of game time from now. Jaron Cumberland just one for eight from the field. He is three of four at the free throw line. And he misses the first of two. You jinxed him right there. You, mentioned, you mentioned what he was from the field. He heard you. He missed. Yeah, but he's at the line, so who cares what I said for the field? I'm not going to have you come over to this side of the table and start talking about broadcaster jinxes. I'm just not going to allow it. Cumberland hits the second. Come on, you, you, when you were on the other side, you couldn't hear me from across the way. No, but I would find something to blame okay. it on. Mississippi State's got to get some buckets quickly here. They've had trouble scoring all game. Just eight for 30 in the second half. Carter a long three, online but short. Pass around the perimeter, dribble around the perimeter, three-point shot. That's not a formula for success. All sale substitutions coming for Ben Howland on the next whistle. Broom has played most of this second half with Jennifer on the bench. Broom has his pocket pick by Weatherspoon. <laughs> and it's going to be a shot clock violation. I'm going to tell you this. They're losing, but Weatherspoon is spreading around who he steals the ball from. And hey, let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. If there is anybody that I want to see with a lightsaber, it's Dick Vitale. Very excited for that one, Texas and Michigan. Mississippi State, by the way, trying to avoid an 18th straight loss to a ranked team. And that's not going to help. And a whole lot's going to have to change in this last two minutes for that to happen. Again, they're young. They're 8 no for another two minutes and five seconds, but they are one of the 21 least experienced teams in Division One, 331 out of 351. And Ben Howland knows that. He knows there are going to be some rough patches along the way. The 8 no starts great. This should be a better team than last year when Mississippi State went 16 at 16. But they're going to keep making strides. And again, they don't have a scholarship senior on the roster. So this team, I, I'm sure, will look different in February and March than it does right now. No doubt. And as we said, they're still growing. This, this is their first road game. This is their first test, so to speak. And so, you know, how they respond is what's important. You have nights like this with a young team. You're going to have games like this. And the question is how they respond, how they grow from it. Well, Mick Cronin said at shoot around today after the 66 60 loss to Florida, you don't win many high major games in the 60s. They're at 60 right now. They're winning. Although Clark was just called for an offensive foul. That's not going to thrill the head coach. Yeah, but you know what? When you defend like Cincinnati has defended tonight, you can win a lot of games in the 60s. At the other end, after this replay, Weatherspoon has a shot rejected. Another block shot for Cincinnati. That's 11, which ties the season high. Bearcats next game will be Saturday at UCLA. They'll fly out to Los Angeles Thursday, and it looks like they're going to have a win heading west. Foul on Lamar Peters will send Evans to the line. As you said earlier, this will be a rematch of the NCAA tournament loss that they had last year. And they definitely are fired up going out there. This is a good win for some good momentum as they head to Los Angeles. And Mick Cronin said the second half of that UCLA game last year was a little bit of a different speed than he thought his team had seen during the year. The American wasn't quite as good as we think it's going to be this year as you look at the upcoming schedule. The non-conference schedule maybe wasn't quite as challenging as it was this year. That's part of the reason he wanted to play these four power uh, conference teams in a row here, to he get did. his team a taste. And, and you see, he has after tonight three more games before conference play starts. Without a doubt, that's his plan. You know, 
for good or for bad, he wanted to be tested right here before conference play started. He said that in the second half of that UCLA game in the NCAA tournament, they could click it up a notch and we just couldn't. And so he's just trying to prepare his team for conference play, which is much better, and then also for the postseason. Ninth career game of 20 points for Jacob Evans, 21 and 8. He shot just four for 13 Saturday, turned it over five times. And Jacob Evans, as much as anyone, happy to erase Saturday's game against Florida and put up a strong effort going forward. Stick around here for Michigan, Texas. Intriguing game. A competitive Longhorns team led by the terrific freshman Mo Bamba. It'll be a win for Cincinnati, 31 in a row in home games for the Bearcats, the longest streak in the nation. Clark, Evans, and Evans is fouled. You know, he, he's having a very good game, uh, and that's, that's stating the obvious. What I really like is how the, the latter part of this half, um, mix Coach Cronin has put the ball in his hands. Let him start the offense. Let him bring the ball up the court. Let him initiate what things that are going on. So that's, and you're showing just what a well-rounded player he is. I mean, he can do a lot of things on this court at a high level. As Evans gets to the line here, I know it's early, and, and we're going to see a whole lot of American Conference basketball this year. This Cincinnati team was picked by uh, a vote over Wichita State in the Coaches Bowl. Realistically, is this a season where they should be in the top two of this conference with the talent they have? I, I think so. I think so right now. I think a lot of people, and, and, and you lose a couple of games like they did last week, and, and everyone thinks the sky is falling in. This is an extremely talented team, a well-coached team, and if they can defend like they did tonight, which, which they're, they're just now working up to that point, and I mean in the half court as well as the opportunities created with their full court opportunity pressure, Yes, they are without a doubt a top two team in, this, in, the, in the American Conference. They'll get Wichita State twice in conference play. That'll be a lot of fun when those two meet. Holman swirls in the tip. 16 points for Holman. They get 18. And that's a season high in points for him, a double-double. A bright spot in an otherwise sporadically dark evening for Mississippi State. First loss of the season for the Bulldogs, and it comes in the hands of Mick Cronin, Cincinnati Bearcats. 65-50, your final score. Cincinnati gets the win and snaps a two-game losing streak. They'll head to UCLA in a couple of days. Look to make it two wins in a row. Coming up next, Michigan, Texas. First, we send you to the studio. Obviously, we, we didn't give up layups. You know, points in the paint were hard to come by tonight. I thought they would be. They're a team. They're only shooting 30% from the three-point line, uh, but they're very young. Look, this was their first road game. Young team. Uh, we changed defenses a lot, and uh, I thought it maybe confused them a little bit. But uh, they got great speed, and it's going to be a tough, tough to win down there next year. But our offense still got a lot of work to do. What do you want to see as the next step offensively? I know Jacob Evans had a big game, but where can this team grow on that side of the ball? Just efficiency. You know, I think coach knows this. Like, it's obvious right now we're playing without Troy Copain, who's had the ball for three years in a row for us. I mean, it's very obvious. You, you know, you were at our practice yesterday. So it, it's we're still trying to figure out who's supposed to go where. And at certain points in the game, I'm trying to get Jacob Evans to take over and put the ball in his hands. And it's just the process that we're going through right now. And we're going through it against some pretty good teams here in our last three games. And I think one thing, what you said, and it's very key, it was obvious you're trying to get Evans used to getting those reps. And I have to say, you have this four-game stretch here, but it's preparing you for conference play. Yeah, you know, as you know, it's conference play is very different. It's, it's a bloodbath. And so I thought scheduling these games that Kane Broom and Justin Jennifer, Jaron Cumberland, all three new to the starting lineup. Uh, and then put Jacob in this role is very different for him. Yeah. And I don't think that's people that, on the outside, they just think you just move these chess pieces. Exactly. And it just doesn't, it doesn't go that smooth. You know, right. you got to get some guys some experience. And that's just what we're going through right now in the offensive end. Well, I'll say real quick, tonight, 
Look like Cincinnati defense out there. <laughs> Those are the old days. <laughs> Those are the old days. Nothing's they, easy. They could have brought Jim Burr in here. It'd been a Big East game me against you. <laughs> well, you had Valentine. That's true. <laughs> Close enough. He's lost a lot of weight. I didn't recognize him. <laughs> He's reffing too many games losing all that weight. Vic, congratulations on the week. Good luck out in Los Angeles. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It's good to see you, JT. All right, man. Good all luck. Right, man. Vic Crowder at Cincinnati. The 